Here are the pros and cons of living in Phoenix, Arizona, the Valley of the Sun. These are my personal pros and cons from being a resident here for 20 years, as well as a real estate broker here for 20 years, as well as the comments that I hear from buyers and sellers on things that might have surprised them, good and bad. And then stay tuned at the end. I wanna share with you some definitions, things you'll hear on TV that sound very scary, but you kind of be surprised of what we actually have to say about them. So stay tuned and we'll see you on the other side. So the first item on our list as a pro is probably not going to be much of a surprise to you, but weather and lifestyle. So living in Phoenix, Arizona, we have roughly eight months out of the year that are fantastic. I'm filming this in uh, January and it's going to be in the 60s today, brr, and then seeing the weather up north and some of the storms that go around. Man, it's tough just not to want to be here. We actually get excited when it rains here. It rains at average of 36 days a year. Um, what's funny is our wettest month of the year is August with the monsoons and we average five days of rain that month. Um, lifestyle wise, we have, it's a golf mecca obviously, but there are tons of hiking. Um, you'll see people out jogging, riding bikes, uh, doing triathlons, swimming, walking their dogs. Just everything is done outside. And then we barbecue a lot. We can barbecue 365 days a year. So a lot of people will have great outside areas where they can sit and enjoy the weather um, and enjoy barbecue if, if that's your sort of thing. So another great feature with the lifestyle of Arizona is swimming pools. Believe it or not, we actually use our pools. They heat up in the summer. You can get to 86. 87 degrees and won't have to heat your pool. A lot of folks, including my family, around Easter time will turn on the heater, give it a little hit early so that we can use the pool more, but pools and hot tubs actually get a lot of use in Arizona. The top on my list, to not get in, into the numbers too much, but it's pretty obvious that, that weather has to be the number one pro for moving to Phoenix and Scottsdale, Arizona. The second pro of living in Phoenix and Scottsdale, Arizona, in my opinion, is affordability. Now, our affordability has changed over the years, but I believe it's all relative. So if you look at a cost of living index um, and the how that'll read is the average state would be 100 and Arizona is a 109. So that means what we are 9% higher than the average um, state in the United States. But it, once again, it's relative. California is a 146 on that same scale. Oregon is a 118 and the state of Washington is a 120. So we are relatively less expensive than uh, some of our neighboring states and those are where we get a lot of folks moving from. So cost of living a uh, little bit higher than the country, but when you compare it to neighboring states, we are still a very affordable place to live. Another pro of living in Arizona is the economics. We are actually the top five states in the United States for jobs in 2022, and Arizona is projected to add 721,000 jobs in 2023. All over, lots of different opportunities, but we are uh, on the upturn as a state for job opportunities, and that is just a pro. Okay, another pro of living in Arizona is Mother Nature. Mother Nature likes Arizona. She uh, is kind to us. Now, we get a little bit of heat, we all know that, but we have no hurricanes, we have no tornadoes, we have no earthquakes. Now, somebody's gonna watch this and say, hey, you've had little, tiny little earthquakes. We've never had anything that, uh, well, gets noticed or not something off the shelf. So no offense to the other folks, um, or if you've been through a natural disaster, I hear you, but when you're in Arizona, those are things you don't have to worry about. Mother nature likes us and uh, it's good to be liked. <laughs> okay, so this is a con of living in Arizona, um, the school systems. We actually rank 47th in the nation for school systems. Now, I think once again, it's uh, very much where you live. I've actually added in the link below three of the school districts that I deal with when we're selling homes um, in the in the uh, North Valley. Um, so Scottsdale, uh, Phoenix, Cave Creek, I should say four, and Peoria. And I put links to their school systems and their grades down below. I think that's helpful because not all of the school systems in Arizona are bad, but as a whole, were bad. So uh, with that being said as well, my name is Jeff Seaman with Ironwood Fine Properties and uh, we've been helping folks like yourselves 
uh, move here to the valley for the past 20 years. So if you're thinking of coming our way quickly, or it could be a couple months away, we'd still love to hear from you. All the information to reach out to me is down below um, in the same place I'm going to put the information about the schools. Uh, feel free to ask questions. You can also leave comments down below, but any way you want to get in touch with us is listed down there. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, let's talk a little about a couple of cons of uh, living in Phoenix, Arizona. Once again, we've got to go back to that summer heat. Um, it gets hot and uh, you, know, you know the jokes about dry heat. Uh, it's not bad, but you know, 110 is 110 and 105 is 105. It just gets, it gets very warm. So a lot of folks in Arizona will do, uh, well, they just, we have lots of opportunity to get the heck out of town. You can go from Phoenix to San Diego. A lot of folks will go spend a couple weeks over there, do a, a VRBO. You can actually, within a two hour drive, be in Mexico on the ocean. Uh, and a lot of folks don't believe that, but you can actually be in, down in Mexico in, in less than two hours on a drive. And it's it's not a bad drive to get there. We have uh, just north of us is Flagstaff, Arizona, and we'll get up into elevation up in there where it's 110, but in two hours, you were in the pine trees and in the mountains in the 70s, and it's a two hour drive. I have actually seen people, they've skied in the morning and driven down and played golf in the afternoon when it's that time of year. So the weather can be tough, but we all find ways for those four months to just get out, get a little bit of a break. And there's so many opportunities. We also have lakes in our area. Lake Pleasant um, is in the Northwest Valley. You can be up on the lake very quickly. They have a couple great marinas that actually have boat storage. They have restaurants there. Plenty of room for you to tool around on the lake, get a little bit out of the heat. So lots of opportunities to, to beat it. It is a con, but uh, we try to make it a pro as much as we can. Another con of living in uh, Phoenix, Arizona is unfortunately our air quality has been going down. We have about 20% of the time uh, in a year that we lose our air quality. I shouldn't say lose it, but it considered poor air quality. A lot of that they contribute to our, our, the valley is very spread out. We're not a vertical city. I know we're the fifth largest city and for population in the United States, but we're very sprawled out. Uh, with that, you do a lot of driving. Interesting fact though about the driving. Uh, I looked it up in Los Angeles, which they consider the worst traffic. Um, they say that you average 75 hours uh, per year in your car driving to and from work. The second one, oh, Seattle, uh, 52 hours a year driving to and from. In Arizona, the average is 34 hours. So traffic is a little bit lighter. You're not going five miles an hour stop and start. You're going 75, 80, but you're driving for a while. And uh, that has um, led to some poor air quality in the winter we will get an inversion layer. So the, uh, the cloud cover and the, uh, the, the coldness uh, on the ground will actually cause an inversion layer. And, and you'll see in this photo, this is me driving on a Carefree Highway and you can kind of see the layer hanging over the city in the winter. Personally, that's why I like to live up north uh, in the Scottsdale Carefree Cave Creek Anthem area. And uh, you know, I feel like I'm a little bit out of that, but yeah, that's, uh, that's a con for, for living here. And uh, they, you know, they've got plans to improve it with emissions and, and uh, electric cars, but it's, it's gonna take a while till that gets better. Okay, another con of uh, living in uh, Phoenix, Arizona is uh, the insects, scorpions, and rattlesnakes. When folks move our way, it freaks them out. And, uh, you know, I get it. Um, we have what they call a, a, a bark scorpion that uh, just loves to stop by your house. Um, actually, if, if you'll take a black light and go in your backyard at night, you can see some of them because they'll actually glow, um, which, which, you know, can be a little scary. So they can, they're poisonous. Um, it hurts when they bite. Um, if you're elderly or a small child or sick, you actually can go to the hospital for it. There's been no one that's died from a scorpion bite in the last 20 years in Arizona. You know, they, the more than anything, it hurts a little bit, but you can do things around the house. So you can, you can mitigate them. Um, there are services that will come and make sure that your home is insulated so they can't get in. You can do spray inside and out. And believe it or not, I have a couple cats and the cats seem to take care of them. If someone comes here and they say, Jeff, does this home have scorpions? I'm gonna tell them they probably, they probably have a couple every year. If someone tells you they never get scorpions, to be honest with you, they're probably lying because those little suckers can get in. But it's like anything else. So if I live up north, they have black widows. Um, you know, there's just, 
bugs everywhere. Uh, these guys just look a little scary, but once you live here for a while, it's just not a big deal. And uh, you know, I apologize if somebody watching this video has had a bad experience, but I have never really had a bad experience with them. Um, I've been bit by one once, and to be honest, uh, quick little story, I was taken to the hospital because I just moved here and was freaking out. I got there and they gave me aspirin and uh, ice and said, yeah, go home. So it's a little bit embarrassing, but I know people have been sick by them, so I, I'm not trying to defer to that, but uh, they can be a little bit scary, but there are things to help you mitigate for them. The other is the rattlesnakes. Um, yes, they can get in your yard, uh, and there are things you can put webbing up over drain holes and different things to, to make sure that they, they stay out of your yard. They will come in the summer when it heats up a little bit and maybe go in a corner by your garage. Uh, you can call the fire department, they'll come up and get them. Um, they might even have a neighbor nearby that has a snake claw that can, can grab them. So um, once again, yeah, if people tell you they don't have those, they do. But we learn to live with them, just like you learn to live with anything else for where you were from. And uh, after a while, it's just not that big a deal. Okay, so I told you at the end I was going to share a couple definitions. These are things that, especially when I'm showing homes to folks, that it, you hear it, they ask about it, freaks them out a little bit, and, and they're, they're words that are, are, you know, to Arizona. And so one is a wash or an arroyo. Um, this is a dry creek bed. You hear wash and you think tons of water and it's going to sweep your home away and it's going to be devastating. Uh, let me preference, there, there, there have been bad ones and we have lost people in, in storms and flooding. So I'm not trying to make light of that, but overall we will have a, uh, a storm. The creek bed will get a little bit of water in it and it'll be gone in two hours and it's just not that big a deal. Um, we do have flood zones and if your home is located in a flood zone, then they're, you know, you're gonna need some governmental insurance. Um, but uh, most of the time, a wash is just something pretty to look at and not something to be scared of. So that's one. The second one is a monsoon, and the, the news loves to show those, and uh, I got some pictures on here, they look scary. If you're from up north and you've been in a bad thunderstorm with some rain for two hours, that's what a monsoon is here. It, it just, it's not that big a deal. Um, they're actually kind of cool. Once again, preferencing if people have been hurt, I'm not trying to make light of it, but uh, nine times out of the 10, it is a, it's a rainstorm and we're, it's pretty cool to watch. And then it's gone in a couple hours and, and it's over. Um, the last one uh, is haboob. And that's been the big, the big uh, haboob, the big to-do. Uh, it's a dust storm. And uh, you know, in the summer it's hot and it gets windy. And I got a pretty cool picture that I'll throw up here, but uh, it's a dust storm. It comes through, it gets everything dusty for a little while and it goes away. They're dangerous if you're out driving around. So the folks that are smart, they'll put on their lights, they'll pull over to the side of the road, uh, wait for it to pass and be safe. Um, there have been injuries, um, not trying to make light of that again, but it's just a dust storm, so they're called haboobs. The last one, I've experienced this one uh, when I freshly, newly moved here 20 years ago, called a jumping choya. So a jumping choya is a cactus. It has a little hook on the end. It'll catch your shoe and flip up and stick to you. And then I've had one stick on my calf and I took my hand and I tried to pull it off. Well, now I had my hand stuck to my calf. Uh, I put a picture on here what one looks like. Stay away from them. They, they drop little balls and those things will flick up on you. Um, they'll get your doggy and uh, you just want to you just want to be safe and stay away from those some people like in their golf carts will actually carry or hiking they'll carry pliers um, so that they can actually pry those things away and they don't get them stuck on themselves when they are trying to pry it away so those are just some definitions that uh, you know they're unique to us so i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it helped a little bit if you're thinking of coming our way uh, once again my name is jeff seaman with ironwood fine properties and i'd love to help you uh, everything um, to get in touch with us is down below so see you in the next video thanks